life. Amen. Lord Jesus, you came to give us life and life to the full. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. You are Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we are in so many blessings, Lord. So many blessings, Lord. You are constantly blessing us as a church, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Help us, Lord God, to follow you and to hear you and be led by you and to do your will, Lord. And Lord, help us to just do what you want because you are the best thing in our lives. You are indeed Jess Emmanuel, the best things that we can ever have. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless you.
God will bless you for stepping out and not being shy. Oh, no. <laughs> Always. Oh, look at you, you're shaking on oh. He always moves in power because he's power, you know. He doesn't move in a little bit of power. He's just power. We have a problem connected with him. <laughs> he's always 100%. Sometimes we're like 10. <laughs> yeah. But you know, right here is where we connect with God. It's not something we take lightly. Something we do with reverence because of the sacrifice that Christ made. It's huge. It's the pivotal moment of Christ, Christ's reason for coming. What he sacrificed, I don't think we'll ever truly, completely understand. But he sacrificed everything. That we may have life and life in abundance. Receive from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper he took, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <laughs> She rama kuda ma haino ko shano bukori eleira ya ya so nama kava ki hama kashi says the Lord. I have a great love for you as a people, says the Lord. I have a great love for you, says the Lord. I have a great plan. I have great planning, says the Lord. You will be doing great things, says the Lord. I am leading you, says the Lord. I am preparing you. All these things, all these weeks, all these months, you have been thinking and wondering what is going to come. But there are great things ahead, says the Lord. If you will be Ready and make yourself ready before me, says the Lord, because I love you, says the Lord.
thank you for your word to us this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your love, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to bless us now as we listen to your word and we feel your presence already with us, Lord. So we ask you to minister to our hearts today new strength, new blessing as we've heard your word. Just pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know, this head in, could, I could put this head in a few different ways, you know? The present to come in flood, or the present darkness and the greater darkness, you know, that has come in. You know, but there's no need to worry, there's no need to fear, there's no need to worry. So we're going to look at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, for those of you who got your Bibles as well. So don't um, worry about, um, we're not going to read the whole chapter, but if you read it when you go home, you remember, you all know the story. The children of Israel had just come out of Egypt and after all the miracles, all the, the plagues and the miracles of them being released, coming out wealthier than they ever went in, because the people gave them gold, silver, they gave them so much, they were carrying heavy loads of stuff with them because of the blessing of God. But they came to a point where they soon forget just like we do. We soon forget what God has done. You know, so they got to the sea, the dead sea, the Red Sea, and they were all there, the mountains and hills behind them, and they could hear the sound, the chariots, horses, and soldiers of the army of Pharaoh were marching against them. Pharaoh his mind had been changed again and he was determined that he was going to wipe out all those people, destroy them completely. The children of Israel turned around, oh no, look, why have you brought us this way, Moses? Why have you brought us this way to kill us out here in the desert? And he said, no. So Moses prayed. God was a bit angry with the people by this point. I would have been myself, you know, if you think about it. All that God has done, and then you forget about what God has done for you, that he's the powerful, great God, and you forget what he's done in your life. So God told Moses to raise up his staff. So he stood <coughs> with his staff facing the river. And while they are chariots, horses, and all these men were coming, because if you remember, while they were walking through the desert, God put a pillar of cloud by day and a cloud of fire by night. And I never really realised the significance that when this army came, the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud moved between them and Pharaoh's armies. If you ever watch Charlton Eston and the Ten Commandments, you see it was like a big fiery cloud thing. They couldn't see anything. The Pharaoh's armies were disturbed. They, were, they could not go any further. They were stranded where they were. And we think, oh, the waters opened instantly. They didn't. God brought his wind and he blowed through the night. So by the morning, a path was clear to them. And they walked through the through on dry land. What a wonderful miracle. I mean, a couple of chapters later, if you read it, they forgot about that again. Because they were short of something, they moaned and complained to God. Why God? Why God have we brought us here to die of thirst then it was? And then it was of hunger. Oh, you know, our oh God is so gracious and patient. It's the same with us. So often we forget, and when a problem arises in our lives, what happens? We, we get stressed. Pardon? We turn to God. 
We should turn to God, but more often than not, we don't. We forget God. We forget to turn to him. And they've forgotten again, you know. People are under a lot of stress now with all this going on. The armies come in, the pillar and the fire, and there was them before, but by the morning the waters had parted. They were stressed, they were anxious. You know, they thought, well, 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 what's going to happen next? You know, they saw all the plagues, although it didn't affect them in Egypt. What's going to happen next? And we quite, quite often can be like that in our lives. A little problem may arise, a problem may arise. And we look at this problem and we, we, it may only really be that tiny, but we make it into yeah. something massive, terrifying. Why? We all do it. Why do we do this? Why don't we put our trust in God? We've heard so much this year. Trusting in the Lord. Yes, we're in a difficult time. Every one of us here is in a difficult time today. We have got some sort of issue going on in our lives or something that makes us feel uncomfortable. I'll be honest with you. I was worried and concerned how things were going to work out once all the shop moved in here. You know, that's been on my mind for some months now. How is it going to work out? How are we going to... More my biggest concern was, how are we going to sit everybody? How is everybody going to be able to sit in? Today is great. We've got plenty of numbers. But there are more people coming all the time. So let's keep praying that once this work is done quickly, so the people that are coming in... How many have we got today? Anybody counted? 15, is that? 20? 19. 20? 15. Yeah, 15. 19. Right? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. That's some of the biggest numbers we've had in the world. 15. And God is bringing them in. Oh. So, so, right, <laughs> so, you know, numbers are increasing, and that was my concern. I was worried where we're going to sit everybody. I'm glad that restrictions are relaxed. <laughs> All right, we're not too hard to numbers. <laughs> but uh, I know God said to us in the beginning of the year there was a change coming in the church, and it's already happening. Amen. The numbers are increasing. Amen. <laughs> God was going to rise up those who could write songs, and He's doing that. All those songs today, God had inspired Anthony to write. So Praise the Lord. And I didn't realize He was going to sing that first song this morning. Praise the Lord. But you know. In all this trouble and all these things that are going on outside here, we've got to be calm. We've got to be relaxed. We've got to rest in God. The root of the word worry, do you know what it means? The root of the word worry is to strangle. Yeah. To strangle. And don't we feel like that sometimes when we're anxious and worried? Yeah. We feel like our breath's been taken away. Panic. And the panic. But it's as if you're being strangled. Yeah? That's the root word. It feels like you, when you breathe, your breath is taken away. Sometimes we can be in a storm and high winds and we can feel our breath's been taken away when the wind is blowing at us in the rain, we've, any of us, we've experienced that. We, we, and we have to get somewhere, and it's hammering down, and the wind is in our face, and we feel breathless. We feel choked sometimes. But what we must remember is Jesus has given us the power to walk on serpents and scorpions mm -hmm. and all the power of the enemy, all the power of the devil. So whatever the storm you might be facing, or the flood you might be facing, you know God is with you in that storm. God is always working for us. He knows the storm's coming, and he's going to be there with us in the storm, and he knows what's coming after the storm. You know what comes after the storm, don't you? Calm. 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 And as sometimes... If we, we haven't had rain, regrowth. yeah, regrowth, and we might not have had rain for a while, when a storm is coming, 
you can smell the moisture in the air come in can't you and it's like a refreshing and cleansing so we shouldn't be afraid of storms storms of life i'm talking about not just physical storms out there we still got to be careful of that kind of physical storm but the spiritual storm that comes against us that attacks us yeah remember when we're in the book of nehemiah when they were being tempted by sambalat and all his cronies you know to give up the work what happened god tells them to keep going to they staff in one hand they their tools in one hand and their sword in the other hand and just be prepared and they trusted god the walls were built how many days about 36 days something like that was it, was it a couple of months? 32, no. yeah. No. How was it? Well, anyway, it was the shortest, <laughs> miraculous <laughs> time. Oh. How long have we been praying that the money would come in for us to do that work out there? Mm. A while. It's happening. Two weeks or three weeks' time, the work will start. Two weeks, yeah, we'll be in it. We'll... So we did another transitional time as a church. Days. Pardon? Oh, 52 days. 52 days. Sorry, I forgot. Should have wrote it down. But anyway, we come in, everything's changed, isn't it? Some of you haven't been maybe in the church this week. Look around you, things have changed. Yeah? To us it might be a big problem, a big concern. How are we going to do this? How are we going to run everything we've got? You know, our services and our ministries, what we do during the week. How are we going to do this? And sometimes it can seem overwhelming to us. No. It can seem as if we've been strangled. It's too much. We can't cope with all this going on at the now. And all of us are the same. None of us like change. We get set in. Well, yeah, we do. But really, we don't like big dramatic change. When you've made a plan today, and then that plan never come, doesn't come about that day. We get all anxious, stressed and worried, don't we? Oh, I don't like change. I don't like, I like, to, I like everything to be planned out. I like to know what's going on. Don't, most of us will say that. We like to know what our day is going to be like. Or we like to plan ahead. We must remember, God is walking before us. God is preparing a way where there seems to be no way out of our troubles. I mean, all that's going on out there in the world today, is it ever going to end? We keep saying sometimes, but we trust God. Elvis Newart says this. We've heard the scripture, haven't we? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Think about the flood right now. When the enemy comes in like a flood, our Saviour walks on water. He's not distressed about these things. He just carries on walking on the water. You know? And there's a calm. And there's a peace. Isaiah 59, 19. <coughs> so they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in, see, in some, trans some translations, better to look at this. There's a comma there at the end of the flood. But that comma, if we put it in by the enemy, when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Not a nice way of looking at it. It's when we see floods and we see things. I mean, there's flooding been happening in the world today and fires and all these things that are going on. But our enemy comes and tries attacking us. But I like to look at it that way. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, Anthony's put a comma in there, didn't he? That was good. Ah. He put the comma in. Like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. That's New, that's King, New King James, that is. The Lord will raise up a standard against him. You know? So, what are we worrying about? Why are we trusting?